Hello, yes. everybody. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you all for joining. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Just going to wait uh, a couple of minutes uh, in order for everyone to uh, join this uh, the session. Probably going to start in around five minutes. So if you want to uh, maybe get some water or a cup of coffee, you can st still have some time. Hi Rob, hi Wojciech, hi Emanuela, Hello. hi Epo. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hi Karol. <laughs> hi. 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 Hi everyone. Okay, so everyone can hear me as well? I yeah. assume. Yeah. Yep. So good. All right. So as I was just saying, we're going to start in around three minutes. So if someone okay. wants to get a cup of coffee or some water or whatever you want to drink, you still have some time. OK. And I want to make sure that everyone can see the, the presentation that I'm sharing. That's, yeah, that's yeah. fair. Perfect, very good. All right, two more minutes. This would also be a good occasion to speak about the weather. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> That's your strength, Maurice. Yeah, speak about the weather. All right. Um, how many are we still expecting, Maurice? Could you get me an estimate? Um, yeah, so we now have 15 people in, I see. So there's roughly about 40 people that signed up, but they're from various uh, global regions. So I don't expect any everyone to to join in. Um, or they're very committed. Um, yeah, so I, I suggest we just start in, in two minutes or so. Yeah, I'm going to start in two minutes. Yeah. yeah. Next time we can actually do a pop quiz the first five minutes or something. First five minutes, yeah. Just to, to get the, the energy going. <clears throat> Everybody's like waiting for some for finally to start. <laughs> Hello, Moritz. Hi, Stefan. Good to have you here. Or next time we can do like the, um, they say sometimes that you need to tell your, your biggest failures. So we start <laughs> off with the first five minutes giving the biggest item failures. Well, it would be easier to, to, to identify when I, I didn't fail because it fa <laughs> failure is so, <laughs> so often happening. So <laughs> yeah. it's difficult to remember. <laughs> well, it's important in the learning curve, right? So you must be very, <laughs> a very high level then. I'm also a very high level through failure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think um, we're going to start then. Is that okay, Maris? Yeah, yeah. So. If, she, if people yeah. come in and I will obviously just allow them, I will allow them into the this uh, session. Um, All right, so uh, welcome everyone. Uh, to this IT asset management train the trainer session. Um, the session is organized by Van Haren Learning Solutions in cooperation with ITAM Org 
and Purple Griffin. Um, so the goal of this webinar is to facilitate guidance on how to offer courses on IT asset management for trainers and training organizations. Um, well, let's, we have so this is the first session, and then next week there is a, a second session. Um, and for this meeting, please put your uh, microphone on mute. Uh, can uh, leave your camera on, uh, which is uh, it makes it a bit more fun for the speakers to speak. Um, but this session is recorded, so if you do not want to participate uh, in this recording, then it's probably best to turn off the video. And I think that the uh, teams also put in a notification. Um, and if there are any questions uh, or something is missing or um, the, the, the screen is freezing, just put it in the chat and I will make sure to read it and uh, try to fix it. So my name is Rolf van Veldhoven. I'm your I'm the moderator for the this session. I work for uh, Van Herre Publishing, which is a standard and best practice publisher, and I'm responsible for business development and the mark and uh, I'm the marketing manager. I will also be the moderator for the session. Um, so the the agenda for today, I just want to start with some remarks if I have not already done so. Um, so questions uh, can be asked via the chat. Um, in order to keep it a clean session, uh, I will ask the questions on your behalf, or if it is not clear, I uh, will give you uh, the floor in the middle of say. Um, we try to create a dialogue, um, but we do have limited time and there's a lot of uh, information to discuss. Uh, so, um, yeah, we try to create it, but if it's not possible, it's due to the enormous amount of information um in the limited time um yeah as i said before this session is recorded uh, so keep that in mind uh, so the agenda is uh, first i will start uh, with an introduction um and uh, okay the introduction about item org and final learning solutions um then maurits who is the director of van Herre learning solutions will give some information on the partnership schemes, the community that is recently launched and um, how to launch partnerships. Then Steve will uh, give an introduction on IT asset management, software asset management and hardware asset management, as well as the core structure uh, and the training of the asset management. At the end, there will be a Q&A session in, uh, where you can ask uh, questions. If questions pop up during the the session, you can also you can already put them in the the chat, and I will make sure to read them and to use them uh, in the end. Uh, there will be a break that will be around after one hour um, or so. I will uh, see to that as well. Um, yeah. So, oh, that's the wrong button. Um, yeah, so uh, as you can see here, this is the certification uh, scheme on IT asset management, software asset management, and hardware asset management. Uh, through the expertise of Van Herre Linux Solutions, multiple certifications have been developed, which you can see on the top right. Uh, there is the item foundation certification, which is focused on the foundation principles of IT asset management. Software asset management obviously is focused on the software, and then we've got hardware. Asset management, which is focused on the hardware. Um, per, oh, wrong. Uh, per certification, there is a syllabus available. There's also an online demo exam available. Um, included in the exam, the official exam is a practice exam. This all is supported by um, a IT asset management workbook published by Venera Publishing. Um, and the courseware. There's also a courseware available per certification, which enables a trainer and training organizations to quite instantly. And there uh, will be a e-learning uh, available through Purple Griffin. Um, okay, so this is the, the one of the main uh, topics of the session. 
Then I will give the floor to Jesper. He's the chairman of uh, ITEM Org, the uh, IT Asset Management member organization. Jesper. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Can Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity and uh, and uh, pleased to um, to also meet uh, with uh, with all these uh, with the uh, with the new partners. Um, I guess many of you already working with Van Heron uh, for years and uh, and have been looking forward to getting also the item program. I'm sure uh, that's certainly our ambition that we will uh, try and motivate you and encourage uh, you to uh, have a deeper uh, look into what that basically uh, brings to. Not to you, well, to you as a business opportunity, but to your uh, clients uh, out in the organizations. Rolf, you may want to advance for me so I can uh, take the next one. I'll be very uh, brief. We have, as uh, Rolf said, very short time, so very happy to take more in depth uh, um, discussions on, on, on Icemark, but this is the sort of the overview of. Um, of who we are, what we do. We're basically a membership organization, international membership organization, um, say with a, a European perspective in the sense that there is uh, 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 there is sort of um, another uh, membership uh, organization that, that has a viewpoint that comes from a different angle. Our sort of a, 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 Route to this is to to look into um, to to the to the needs and the requirements uh, for uh, people uh, working uh, in ITS and management, and in the outskirts of ITS and management. I'll come back to to that in the in, in the second. What I mean by that, but to uh, to enable <clears throat> uh, to enable organisations to to really um, provide uh, the, the the business support the governance um, that 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 is uh, required uh, and item is is the basis for that so the members are basically um, sitting in 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 various um, positions in an organization in operations in procurement and in legal and, and and so on and so forth so so the the challenge and the and the opportunity is to to um to grasp these uh, sort of uh, people in the different areas and help uh, mature uh, enable a good item uh, practice in an organization we are organized in the in local chapters uh, so so we we do have sort of uh, local initiatives uh, that also reflects the fact that people want to get together and discuss things uh, face to face and and on a local basis but also that there are uh, a lot of um, uh, differences in, in in how how things work from from region to region from country to country uh, so so that's uh, that's key to have that grasp that information uh, and knowledge and share that from the from the community from the different regions uh, into the international uh, sort of a coordination point if we call it that we do uh, as a body of knowledge develop training and certification it's uh, all based on the iso standards and 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 uh, and itil the ITIL service management best practice we provide knowledge base toolbox r and d um that's what we basically do, and together with uh, with, uh, with with partners like uh, Van Heron, we also develop uh, accredited uh, training and certification. So for the agenda for today, we have various uh, partner organisations as well. On the right hand side, you'll see the computer societies, tool vendors, um, uh, uh, also ISO. We are a liaison C member of uh, of the ISO uh, work group twenty one that defines sets the standards for. Uh, the item standard uh, 19770. Uh, I'm providing uh, in this presentation that you will get later on some links so you can actually go directly to these uh, reference sites to 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 take a deeper dive. Uh, it's basically too much to cover in this. Uh, we provide uh, memberships for individuals and for corporations. It's also uh, linked uh, from from this uh, and, and, and the um, upper left and corner, uh, and below that we also have a professional service uh, organization established uh, this year to help uh, uh, professional organizations, uh, uh, consultancies, um, large organizations um, implement the organizational implementation of of the of the of, the, uh, of item uh, in, in 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 real life. 
We also run the, the item channel, uh, which is a platform for, again, sharing uh, news, information, uh, everything that is sort of uh, valuable for, for, for the item industry um, is, a, is a, and can be shared uh, on this uh, channel. It's an open channel. Right, so uh, next slide, please, Rolf. So in this uh, in this uh, career path slide, we could we could say we we really tried to uh, to uh, build sort of the uh, say the the house of IT or or also let let people understand if if you are sitting in a in, in certain roles uh, in 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 the security uh, in IT service in in, in procurement uh, as a contract manager etc. Then you you basically will need some uh, some some skills, some competences, and the ITIL Foundation and the ITEM Foundation we believe is a, is a basis for um, uh, gives a lot of base knowledge that you that you require uh, to fulfill these roles, and then you can can certainly build on, uh, on as a specialism in, in, in various roles as an IT asset manager or a software asset manager. Uh, further specialization uh, and certification um, and on top of that. So it's it's really um, it's really giving a, an understanding of without without um, without good practices in, in, in ITAM, you're not going to basically not able to deliver good service or not able to without good governance uh, on, on, on your IT assets, you're not uh, you cannot run a secure operation. Uh, it's it's really tying these uh, these things uh, very much together, and sometimes people will not understand uh, the, so 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 how how that ties together, and that's obviously from an organization point of view, but certainly also from a competency point of view, a, a, a critical thing to uh, to understand. Yes, and I think the next slide will uh, be actually handover for for you, Marit, for yes. introducing yourself, which is probably not needed, but I'll let you do it if you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, indeed. Uh, thank you, Jesper. Also, thank you, Rolfar. Um, hi, everyone. For those that uh, don't know me, I see uh, many familiar uh, names uh, in the participants list, but uh, Maris van der Plas, Director of Van Hagen Learning Solutions. Um, I will first give a quick intro on Van Hagen Learning Solutions itself. So, uh, Rob, if you can. Yes, uh, indeed, for those that are not familiar, uh, Van Hagen Learning Solutions. Um, is the sister organization of Van Haren Publishing, uh, where Van Haren Publishing is a best practice publisher uh, for the last 20 years and several well-known standards. Uh, we are a digital certification provider. Um, so we do, um, sorry, my, my screen just went blank, but um, so we're a digital provider. Um, our goal, we aim to be the digital certification uh, organization in the future uh, in best practices and standards. And so how we try to achieve that is uh, we have several goals for ourselves. We try to really focus on niche best practice certifications, uh, really stay in that domain of best practices. Um, also regarding our certification, uh, we try to only work with membership or community based certification. We think that the true value of uh, best practice is that it's a well that it's a best practice that many people work with it and therefore that community and membership uh, supports it. Um, I see also that other people mention about the white screen. Um, so if I turn off my camera, my screen uh, disappears. So maybe it has something to do with the internet connection. Um, um, yeah, and then how we try to achieve that. Uh, so we try to do it through key partners, uh, working with education partners and training providers um, to really enable them to, to get the best out of their, their efforts. Um, uh, what we try to do is really create clear value uh, for users and uh, partners. So we try to do this uh, by maintaining the high quality standard of Vanara Publishing, which I must say is quite a, takes quite an effort, but we really try to keep that, that quality level that has also made that brand. We aim to involve partners and to grow the system, so to get training vendors or training partners, but also tooling vendors, uh, but also end users, get everybody involved and really grow the slice, uh, grow the pizza instead of increasing our own slice. Um, transparency, quality through transparency, uh, showing what we're doing, how we're doing it, and getting other people to be involved, uh, getting trainers involved in, in the certification and in the effort and create quality throughout the, throughout the ecosystem. 
as mentioned, facilitate where possible. And we also like to think that we try to innovate and uh, think out of the box, uh, come up with new solutions. And so that's where we are trying to go towards. Um, so that's a quick brief intro in Vanaya Learning Solutions. So then on the next slide, um, to give a quick overview of that out of box thinking, as, uh, as we like to call it, we now, uh, since really recently, set up the uh, community, Vanaya community. Uh, it's still a beta version, but so this is what we try to enable here for uh, certified prof professionals is to enable them to connect to their peers, uh, get updates on the latest developments, books and content and related um, yeah, related happenings uh, surrounding best practices and certification that they're interested in. Also provide them free materials, free ebooks, uh, groups or forums to their liking and also provide a repository of education partners or training partners as yourself. And then for the education partners, what we try to provide via this community um, is enabling them to download their training material um, if it's been made available to them um, so that they can they have one place to access all the material and also get the latest updates on material, enable you to place your view, view and your comments in this group so that you, but also your colleagues and partners can also see these comments and you can discuss here instead of having it being a, a Van Hare show, let's say, get the community to co-create on a quality uh, set product. Um, uh, you can also there create your own profile, connect with training vendors, uh, connect with users, um, and also uh, post your experience and know-how and best cases and how we said in the beginning, maybe even your, your, your failed attempts. Um, we also try to dare um, get uh, accredited education partners and education partners recognized, as we call them. So that will be slightly, uh, shortly highlighted on the next slide. So what we try to do, what you can see here is that we, you, if you're a partner of us on the portal, we show that you're an education partner. So when you indeed get uh, users uh, that come in this page and see you, they can also connect to you, ask you questions, reach out to you and this is all all open of course for education partners you get availability to the courseware and regular users or professionals they don't um, but they can find you see your post and and uh, stuff like that um then lastly regarding our partnership uh, scheme or almost lastly so we try to make the partnership scheme uh, accessible for everyone. That's also education partnership and no annual cost accessible for everyone. No boundaries, real partnership, clear benefits. Um, you can start tomorrow. So that's that's the left side that you can see here. Um, really trying to make it an easy, accessible model for all. And if you want to show your uh, show your experience and show your your quality as an accredited training partner, that's also possible. Uh, we'll accredit you. But here we, as I mentioned before, we want to show clear benefits. So if you do become an accredited education partner of us, um, you get many extras like free exams for your trainers. Um, you um, here, as mentioned, you get access as an education partner to you, higher discount on exams. All the books from Van Hara Publishing that they publish, all the eBooks you can download for free. Um, and uh, there's also a possibility if you like to become an affiliate via us through PeopleCert, the affiliation fee is also included. Um, and then lastly is the really lastly this time is also having access to the launching partnership uh, program and that will be highlighted on the next slide. Go there. Yeah, so uh, almost out of breath. So the the indeed the last slide and then I will give the uh, the the mic to somebody truly interesting. Um, so what, what do we do with the launching partnership program? As mentioned, we tried to create true benefits. So also for this um, scheme, um, the item scheme, are we want to have launching partners that launches this product and certification in their market. Um, launching partners would then get three, uh, sorry, 10 uh, free exam vouchers and also an included item membership to all the candidates that do the course. So that we really try to get value uh, for you. What we do expect from me in return is to join the marketing activity and also uh, mention that you're one of the launching partners. We will communicate this, you will communicate this and also speak together that we really agree that we do this together and set this out in the market. So we try to get close communication and really um, make this work uh, for you and yeah, achieve some success. That's the ambition and always feel free to reach out, ask any questions. 
we tried to really uh, support. Um, as mentioned, now somebody truly interesting, <laughs> Steve Lawless. Now I'll uh, give the mic to you. If that's okay. I think you're still on mute. No, I've unmuted myself. Ah. Steve, do you want to do the introduction on this slide, or you want to go to your own presentation? Um, I'll I'll go to my own, if, if that's okay. I'll, I'll start sharing content. I'll stop sharing. Perfect. Thank you all for listening. I'll go on mute as well. Hopefully, I'll start sharing. Right there we go. That's the one to share. So you should all see yeah, a, big, a big blue blob with ITAM TTT in the middle. Right, OK. Um, I'm conscious Rolf said that we'd take a, a, sh a short break uh, about an hour into the presentation. <laughs> right, OK, so no, no pressure. Let's get to um, a, a particular point so we can have a, a cup of tea or coffee. Uh, or just do your first part, Steve, and I think then we'll, we'll be perfect for a first break. You think so? Yeah. OK, you, you, you obviously haven't been on one of my training courses, right? <laughs> OK, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm Steve Lawless. I work for Purple Griffin. Um, I'm one of the directors. I'm lead trainer and a consultant. Um, we, we have been working with Itemorg and Van Haren uh, for probably at least five years now. And we've been delivering uh, ITAM Foundation and SAM training um, over that period. Um, my <laughs> my background is uh, 40 years in IT, as you can tell by the grey hair, um, and at least 30 years now working in IT service management, which includes ITAM. Um, originally, IT operations, as most people back in those days started on mainframes, working in technical support, working in software development. So I developed a IT service management tool and at the heart of the IT service management tool were configuration items, um, which we could link incident problems and changes to so that these were our assets. This is what we called our asset register. Um, and then we, we renamed it a CMDB at a later stage once we started linking all the assets together. Um, so about 30, 30 odd years ago, I started working in ITIL, lots of roles in service desk management, capacity problem, service asset and configuration manager, um, change manager and other roles, all too numerous to mention. Um, in terms of training consultancy, I deliver ITIL, um, I, I delivered ITIL version one, two, three, and now ITIL four. Um, also ITAM training, as I've said, over the last five years, um, but also things like SIAM, Agile, Lean, DevOps, user experience and artificial intelligence training. Um, and I've, I've worked at numerous organisations, most of them quite large, um, a whole raft of insurance companies, including EXA, um, worked for O2, Her Majesty's Customs and Excise, a government body, uh, which managed or used to manage uh, the UK's VAT system, but also Barclays Bank and the last 18 years now with Purple Griffin. Um, so 22 years gathering knowledge and the last 18 spreading that knowledge uh, worldwide. OK, so um, I've, I've sort of been asked along today um, as um, an accredited education partner of Van Haren um, to give other education partners or other prospective um, training companies um, an overview, uh, a very brief overview of um, the three courses we currently have, which is the Item Foundation course, the SAM Specialist and the HAM Specialist. Um, item Foundation's just been rewritten uh, brought up to date, aligned with ITIL 4. Uh, SAM uh, has also been updated. That's been around for about three years. Um, again, aligned with ITIL 4 and also the new version of uh, ISO 19970. And HAM um, has been on the development bookshelf for a little while and it's finally coming to market, um, at, at least in the beginning of Q1. OK, so we run these courses in, in two ways. Well, probably three ways now. We 
we were running them as face to face courses in classroom. And we ran the courses over two days um, and then we decided that the, the Dyson Foundation course I'm really talking about, we ran it over two days, little bit rushed exam at the end. We, we're now running it over three days, a uh, little bit more relaxed, it allows us to add our own material in to the course material uh, we buy from Van Haren. Um, and uh, just to give you a hint, if you buy the courseware and the exam together, you get a slight discount, which does add up over time, hopefully. Um, and hopefully come 1st of January, the, the pound doesn't tank against the euro. So, um, and if it does, I'll be uh, bringing up Moritz, asking for extra discount. We'll make Welcome it work. Moritz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we we will wait to see the way the pound goes, but um, how much going? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So um, what I'm saying really is that um, th these courses are flexible, so you can run them over you know two days, three days. Um, we we have spoken to customers about running them over several weeks in three hour sessions or four hour sessions. So it, it is possible to do that. Uh, th the exams currently, uh, with all exams, um, they're um, online, proctored. Um, they, the, the foundation is one hour, one hour and a quarter if your first language isn't English. Simple multiple choice questions. So um, the definition of an asset is A, B, C or D. One correct answer, three incorrect. Typically what we see are two obviously incorrect, one distractor. So, but there is only one correct answer. Um, the the is, is um, course isn't English. Um, and, and as part of the exam, the candidate is given access to test questions as well. Uh, so that they can go through the test questions several times uh, before they take the live exam. So um, and we have a really good pass rate on that. Um, the courses, as I said, we we were running them classroom. That probably won't be happening again until quarter three, 2021. Thing touch wood. Um, so we're running them virtually, but we also are also or we have also developed uh, e-learning. So we've developed e-learning for the ITAM Foundation and we're in the process of developing the, the Sam and Ham uh, specialist qualifications as e-learning. Um, and they will be available um, as um, vanilla white labelled uh, systems as well for um, other accredited training organisations to uh, to use okay. at, at, at a price. Um, let's let's just move on. So. OK, the, the Item Foundation um, training course. Um, the, what I've done is extracted some slides, put a little bit of information together to give you a, a feeling about what the Item Foundation course is about. And from a, a trainer's perspective or training organisation perspective, what the trainer will need to know um, in terms of their knowledge, skills, capabilities. OK, so what, what the trainer has to do um, in the two or three day item foundation course is to ensure that the, the delegate has an understanding of the basic disciplines, the, the basic terminology around ITAM, why ITAM is important. In terms of getting buy in from the, uh, the sponsors, uh, from management, uh, so what the issues and challenges are. Um, in terms of setting it up, running, getting the various stakeholders involved. So the, the trainers would be expected to have some experience, some knowledge that they can apply to this er these areas to give uh, de delegates confidence that they they go back to their organisations, they can actually uh, put a business case together for ITAM. Um, or if they're currently working in ITAM and they're looking to expand the scope of ITAM, do that, uh, what the approach should be. And, and typically people who come on the Item Foundation course are 
people who are starting off maybe in a junior role in ITAM, or they've literally been told you're in charge of ITAM next week, you bury yourself on a training course, um, or it's, it's people maybe working in contract management, procurement, who think they really should know something about ITAM. So they, they're wanting to expand the, their level of knowledge, at, at least at the foundation level. So the, the trainer would be expected to, to have sort of a, a background, some sort of background in ITAM, ITIL, because um, a lot of the um, a lot of the disciplines, concepts, ideas, technology supports both ITIL and ITAM. Um, and for for many years, ITAM, um, according to ITIL, was part of ITIL um, in terms of configuration management which was basically connecting the, the assets together and loading that data into a CMDB or a CMS. So ITAM was always there, uh, but hidden. And um, ITAM was a separate discipline and probably not well funded. Um, one of my colleagues used to call it, call it a poison chalice. Uh, but increasingly, ITAM has grown in importance. It's now one of ITIL 4's 34 practices, and it, it's a very important practice. As, as we saw in the, the, the Careers Path House, ITIL Foundation and ITAM Foundation really are key to understanding how, um, how the other processes can work. It, it provides information and data to the other practices to allow them to be efficient. Um, because we need to understand what assets we've got, where they are, who's using them, what are they using them for, what are they connected to, um, so that we can deliver our, our services to our customers and our users so they can achieve their business outcomes. So a good understanding of the end-to-end -end service uh, method of service delivery from asset through to business service does help and how ITAM underpins all of the other uh, process areas or practice areas. Okay. Um, the ITAM Foundation also covers four key areas, hardware, software, people and information, services and cloud, which we'll look at a little bit later. Um, we also want the delegates to understand the workflow because everything has a life cycle. So from procurement or from specification through to retirement and people you think has a, a life cycle e even people okay that's why we have movers leavers and joiners in an organization okay well, they they are, people are assets and they they do need to be managed okay uh, hr does a, a good job but in terms of how those people use it assets um to, to achieve business objectives um, HR probably doesn't understand that side of it, but in IT we need to. Okay, so we, we want to develop a framework um, in, for our organisation in, in terms of an understanding of the assets and how those assets are used. So we, we've developed a, an ITAM ecosystem, uh, which is everything from the whole life. So if you think of an, an ecosystem in the forest, how everything works together to to create um, an environment which is which is nice and works okay well what we don't want to do in a it or an itam ecosystem is find we've got lots of dead it assets just piling up or we're losing it assets someone's coming and taking them and we don't know where they've gone okay so our ecosystem needs to be self-contained and we need to manage all of the elements within it OK, so that, that, they're the sort of messages we're wanting to get out at the foundation level to the delegates. And um, we, we, we may be preaching to the converted in terms of some of the delegates, uh, but it's worth reiter reiterating that. So th the trainer really needs to be able to impart that knowledge to the delegates. OK, so foundation course is primarily made up of, of six units, so an introduction, hardware, software, services and cloud, people information, and then we pull the whole lot together in interfaces. OK, so let's just go through those briefly. OK, so the introduction 
key learning objectives for foundation is understand the disciplines, the issues and challenges. Yeah, we, we just covered that and I've just realized I put a duplicate slide in. OK. Or I'm going backwards with my slides. What am I doing? Am I pressing? Let me just see. I'm glad we've recorded this. Yes, I'm going in the right direction. OK, so. Double, um, double coverage of important material, Steve. <laughs> yeah, it is. I haven't put duplicate slides in. I was just pressing the wrong arrow. <laughs> right. So, so thank you for that. Thank you for the support. Right. How many years have I been doing this? Right. So the, the introduction, really, what the trainer needs to be able to do, explain what an asset is. It's something of value, uh, which is used to deliver or partly deliver a service. It, it may not be a an IT service. OK, so when we're talking about assets, we could be talking about um, a utility company. So a, a company which um, th the assets to deliver gas or electricity or telecoms. So we could be talking about cellular towers or pipe work or cables. So these are assets and, and these utility companies manage those assets. In terms of ITAM, what we're looking at is IT assets. So we, we need to consider what ITAM is. It's the management of IT assets, um, but there's no benefit in documenting our IT assets for the sake of documenting them. It's it's really about the the use we can we can make or other people can make of that data. So problem management, information security management, financial management. So if we provide provide them with accurate up to date data, they can make good decisions. Are based on that data. OK, so we, we need to explain why it's important. We need to be able to explain the life cycle of assets and each asset will have a slightly different life cycle. So uh, the laptop in front of me might have a life cycle or of say two years from specification through to disposal. OK, Ho hopefully me as a, a people asset, person asset, have a life cycle of more than two years, but there will still be the introduction of me as an asset into the organization. And when I leave the organization, the disposal of that asset and, and equally for software, um, for information and data. So, but it, it depends on the value. Uh, so we need to understand what assets we need to track and manage, and which assets we don't which assets which aren't really assets or the, the fixed assets or assets which are really commodities, the toner cartridges or, or something like that. We, we're not going to track them. It's it's a mouse. We're not going to track through our, our life cycle. So we need to understand the life cycle. We need to understand the ecosystem. So who are the people who are the various stakeholders um, in IT asset management? What, what's their role? Um, in, in the various stages of the life cycle. Um, and we have a concept of what we call the Bermuda Triangle. Um, and this is uh, it's a, a three way link. The Bermuda Triangles is a place in the uh, Caribbean Sea. And legend has it ships and airplanes disappear into this Bermuda Triangle, never to be seen again, um, abducted by aliens or eaten by a, I don't know, a sea monster or something, or they, they time travel, well, whatever. There's, there's lots of um, uh, myths around the Bermuda Triangle, uh, but it's where things disappear. And, and what we see in ITAM typically is between uh, someone requesting something, someone procuring it and someone deploying it, everything disappears, all the paperwork, all the information, so we've bought some software and we haven't got the license or we've bought a piece of hardware and we haven't got the warranty. OK, so what we're looking at is. It is putting processes, procedures in place to allow us to to track these assets. OK, so we don't have a Bermuda Triangle. Uh, and the other th the other thing we look at in uh, foundation is the ISO standards. So we've got ISO 55000, which is a, a basic standard for asset management, and we've got ISO 
19770, which specifically in the past we've used for software asset management. Um, but it can be used for non-software asset management as well. So it, it's a good standard and it's a it's a tiered standard, uh, which, which we'll look at in a second. OK, so we're also looking at things like ITAM models and every organisation will manage their assets differently, but they should have some basics in place. So we should have some overarching strategy. We should have a, a, a plan for how we're going to implement that strategy and we should have a, at least a policy uh, for IT asset management. And then dropping out of that, we've got objectives and other strategies maybe around um, software uh, uh, software deployment um, or software license management um, we've got various plans and life cycle activities for the different types of assets um, and then we've got to make sure that we've got the capabilities to be able to manage those assets assets through the life cycle um, so this is in terms of making sure we've got sufficient resources, processes, competencies, technology to be able to do that. Um, and then we have this cycle of improvement. So we, we need to establish this in the organisation. So, so we, as a trainer, we would discuss the, uh, the, the various methods of doing this. OK, so we want to develop a, a process framework as well. So interfacing our IT asset management process with configuration management, deployment, procurement, finance. Yeah, there's a whole raft of other processes. But organisations will be in different levels of maturity. So as a trainer, we should be able to provide advice and guidance on, on how this can be established. Um, and, and typically we, we talk about baseline assessment and gap analysis. So identifying where you currently are and what's your vision where do you want to be and then how do we get from a to b over the next month six months 12 months two years um, so we, we can look at this in terms of improving the maturity of it asset management in the organization okay um, and then typically at the end of this introduction section we just have the pub quiz um, as, as Jan has started to, to call it, uh, which is some sample test questions. Um, so the trainer uh, should really understand the answer and the rationale for why the answer is the answer and why the other answers aren't the answer to this particular question. Um, because it's really embarrassing as a trainer if you don't know the answer why B is not the answer. When your delegate has a really convincing argument why it should be the answer and not the one we've chosen. OK, so so good, good knowledge of the the questions and the rationales helps. OK, so we move on to hardware as, as the second module. And again, it's looking at lifecycle basic concepts. Um, it's also looking at uh, mobile assets because uh, we're not just tracking desktop and laptops now, we're tracking tablets mobile phones, other mobile technologies. OK, so we, we need to look at the benefits and in most organisations that have been doing hardware asset management, maybe in an ad hoc way, maybe in a formal way um, for for years. OK, the, this is my, was my first area 35 years ago, crawling under desks, looking for serial numbers on the back of base units. We're going to look at best practices and we're also going to look at tools uh, which are typically used in hardware asset management. So um, tools for detecting assets, tools for tagging assets, tools for recording our asset portfolio data. Um, and lots of your delegates will have their own favourite tools or tools organisation users. Um, so knowledge of those tools and technologies would be useful. So if you haven't got hands on experience, Google, get onto Google, find the, the, the software vendors or the hardware vendors um, and, and have a look, see if you can have a play around with the tool. OK, if you don't ask, you don't get. So we look at hardware um, and recording hardware data for the sake of recording, it's worthless. It's only when we start to build on it. So 
the foundations of our our processes. So we need to start engaging with the, the stakeholders, at, at least identifying who the stakeholders are, talking to them, what information do you want us to hold in our asset portfolio or CMDB or whatever you want to call it. OK, so we're looking at basic information recording about the assets. Um, on the slides in the in the course, we'll have um, examples. But the trainer should be able to throw extras in, ask the delegates what other um, information they would want to record for hardware assets and also identify who this data is of use to, who will use this data. OK, so um, if we're starting to get people thinking about the various stakeholders, it's not just a case of um, recording the data for posterity, it's making use of the data. Uh, we then move on to mod module three, and again, looking at what the concepts and purposes are, where Sam sits in the ecosystem, what's the value. Uh, we also introduce, um, <laughs> because software asset management can be quite costly if we do it wrong. So we're looking at concepts of compliance, audit, um, and if, if you've got some um, war stories, if, if you've been audited, um, if you know organisations who've been audited, if you know organisations that have been fined, um, then th they make good war stories. Um, but my war stories are two people on one course. One had just been fined £6 million and the other one £46 million for, for, for being non-compliant. Okay, but, and they were both compliant for exactly the same reason. Um, which, which was ROI. a talk point. Say again? Oh, yeah, the ROI. Like return on investment on the training. It, it is. It was. <laughs> the, the only trouble is if they'd done the training before, before they were fined. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Th they'd actually been fined and then decided to come on the training. Um, and in the UK, we have a saying about closing the stable door as after the horse has bolted. And that this was the prime yeah. example. Yeah. OK, so. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're looking at. Yeah, what, what good software asset management is. So let's have a look at a couple of slides we cover. It, it's looking at benefits. So this is how you sell SAM or software asset management or software license management, which is a subset of, of software asset management. How you sell it to management. If, if you're not doing it, you should be doing it. Um, we look at compliance. So we talk about license compliance, but also we're then linking into security compliance and policy and procedure compliance. So software license management is, isn't just about making sure we've got sufficient licenses um, and we're not going to get fined. It's also about making sure that we've, we're adhering to software policies in terms of where we store our software, who has access to the software. So we're linking into information security management. So understanding who's using our assets, how are they using them, where are they using them? Um, and also making sure we've got policies in place for things like patching and um, security updates, things like that. OK, so we, we need to cover these as part of the software module. Um, also looking at audit in terms of what, ha what would happen. And, and again, it's an ROI. Uh, a return on investment in terms of what would happen if we if we are audited and we're found to be in violation. OK, um, ultimately imprisonment. I'm still waiting to find to find someone who's gone to prison, um, but it could you could go to <laughs> literally go to prison. OK, so in software uh, asset management, we we talk about one nine seven seven oh and that's a tiered structure. And we look at the the processes and procedures we need to have in place to achieve tier one, tier two, tier three. Um, and th these are really the basics. We we can do a lot more than this. This is just an example, really, um, taken from the information that we've got. Um, and there's this tiered structure. So tier one of one nine seven seven zero compliance is we've got trustworthy data. So we've got data about the software, where the software sits and our license information. 
tier two is where we've integrated um, with other processes um, and we've we've established efficiencies. Tier three is we've optimized and typically automated a lot of the work so in terms of report production. So we can we can identify our license position at the, the press of a button. OK, so we can be accredited uh, ISO 19770 at three different tiers. Um, then we move on to the next module and the next module is looking at services and cloud um, or services in the cloud as well. So this could be documenting services as an asset. So email, Microsoft Office, yeah, which is a software asset, but we could say maybe email is a service asset or we could have a, a, a desktop service, which includes Office. Um, every organization is going to define it differently and a different way. So we, we need to we need to record services um, and identify who's, who has access to these services. And some of these services will be cloud solutions. So in this module, we're looking at um, how we manage those assets, how we manage service assets, how we manage cloud assets. Um, so looking at what organizations typically do in terms of procuring uh, cloud services, looking at the benefits of managing those services through what we call CM, uh, what some of the challenges and pitfalls are, what processes we need to put in place, um, and also looking where CM sits in the ITAM ecosystem. So obviously the, the, it could be software in the cloud, but equally it could be hardware and software in the cloud. Um, it could be public cloud, could be an internal cloud, could be some sort of hybrid. Um, and we, we look at things like compliance. So again, license compliance, security compliance, process and procedure compliance in the cloud, or looking at it from a cloud perspective. So. A trainer who's got experience maybe in procurement or dealing with cloud services or supported cloud services uh, would be able to bring some war stories to this area. But again, understanding the basic concepts will, will help um, the, the trainer. OK, so understanding basic things like infrastructure as service, platform as a service, software as a service. What, what's the difference between these? Uh, these different uh, concepts. OK, um, and also what organisational benefits to um, yeah, can be delivered through uh, managing cloud um, and service assets. Um, what why the, the business is moving down this road increasingly, moving away from our uh, in-house legacy services to cloud services um, and how ITAM can underpin um, the, the documentation of these services. OK. Identifying the pitfalls. If we understand the pitfalls, we can do something about it. Um, and also what activities do we need to, to be part of? So in terms of the contract negotiations uh, as an IT asset manager, working with procurement, contract management, uh, to make sure that we we get what we need out of it and we can still provide valuable data to problem management, IT service continuity, risk management. OK. Benefits, clear benefits of managing serv um, service and cloud assets. Um, so the trainer's role will be to pose these as benefits and explain why they are benefits to the organization and why they should be undertaken. And next to last, in terms of modules for um, the foundation, uh, we've got people and information. And here we're looking at people as assets and information and data as assets. So not just databases, uh, but maybe knowledge assets um, in a, a knowledge database. So we have PNAM um, and, and they're linked together because typically people are using the information and data. So it made sense to have those together. 
So the, the learning outcomes, again, trainers should understand the learning outcomes and be able to explain to the, the course delegates in, in simple terms um, how or why it's important to manage these assets and how these assets can be managed in, in different types of organisations. You know, so organisations with 50,000 employees, maybe down to organisations with maybe a couple of hundred employees. OK, so we're looking at guiding principles for managing these assets. Um, need to in a lot of cases, we need to explain to management why it's important that we, we're ma we are um, managing the life cycle of people and managing the life cycle of information and data um, and understand what should be in scope and what should be out of scope. So we're, we're not, well, we don't want to uh, take up the role of HR in terms of managing people. We want to manage information about people, but we need to be aware of things like data protection, information security. Um, and also in, in terms of people, you know, as we saw with cloud, there's an increased uh, requirement for flexibility, mobility, access from anywhere. Uh, so we're not tied to a desk you know, for the last eight, nine months. Many of us have been applying mobility, flexibility and access from anywhere. So we need to explain these, um, how we manage uh, people in a more agile, more flexible, more mobile environment, how we manage people and information, plus the hardware and software that they're using as well, when it's not tied to an office desk. And this brings us on to the information security standard ISO 27001. So again, if you can, as a trainer, get access to the standard, understand what the standard is, understand how ITAM underpins ISO 27001, um, and be able to explain it to your delegates. Um, so who may be IT asset managers working with information security managers. Okay, and the, the key point about PINAM is this balancing act between agility and security. So being able to give our end users the flexibility, the agility to work from anywhere and access data from anywhere, but also the security controls which are required. Um, so as an IT asset manager, we need to understand the data we provide and how it's going to be used. So making sure we provide the, the very best data or the or most up to date or complete data and how that will be used by information security managers. OK, the last module of foundation um, is how we bring all this together. So it's about understanding that the stakeholders and the people and the roles and responsibilities, uh, not just of the IT asset manager um, or the um, information security manager, but everybody, the, the service desk, um, the incident manager, the major incident manager, um, third parties, contract managers. So it's looking at all the stakeholders in our ecosystem, what their roles and responsibilities are. It's looking at the relationship between the four areas of IT asset management and looking at how we should communicate uh, with between or how we should communicate as IT asset managers with the various IT asset stakeholders. Um, and th this could be a case of just going out and finding them, talking to them. Um, if, if you work in an organisation that's already doing IT asset management and looking to expand the scope, or we've had lots of major incidents because of poor asset data, and you're now tasked with doing something, we need to explain to the, the delegates how they how they should then go out and communicate. OK, what they need to talk about. Um, putting in place policies and processes and procedures and technologies uh, to to support IT assets, um, make it more efficient to manage those IT assets. So it, it's about pulling it all together, pulling pulling the best practice standards together. So whether it's the, the ITAM standards, whether it's information security standards, whether it's ITIL, 
which is the IT Service Management Best Practice or its equivalent standard, which is ISO 20000, uh, but also understanding things like controls, so governance, um, how how that plays and how that in, um, how that sort of impacts on our uh, on what we do, the controls and guidelines we we follow, the processes we put in place. So that's looking at 38,500 as a standard, which is the, uh, the IT governance standard. Um, and also making sure people have access to this data. It's about visibility. Um, as, as I said, this new version of ITAM um, underpins the new version of ITIL. Um, and one of the guiding principles is, is transparency, visibility. Um, it's also about focusing on value. So the, there's a number of uh, guiding principles there in ITIL. Um, and I, ITAM should adhere to those. OK, so in, in terms of the interfaces, yeah. The, oops, gone again. So yeah, in terms of the interfaces, I said communication is vitally important. Um, and that's across the life cycle of our, our services from specification and acquisition through to disposal retirement understanding who the various stakeholders are um, looking at it from a strategic tactical operational level as well um, and looking at it from a, a process and, and practice level um, and looking down at the various stakeholders and roles within that so as, as a trainer we need to broaden the the scope of the um, IT asset management practitioners who come on the training course. Last couple of slides before we, we take a quick break, because otherwise Rolf will chuck me off, um, is to understand those interfaces. So the interfaces between the various departments or silos, um, the, the four areas of ITAM, and who actually keeps that, that data up to date, whether it's the service desk analyst, database specialist who keeps their uh, database assets uh, records uh, up to date. Um, and this at this day-to-day -day operational level, there'll be there'll be other processes in place. There'll be change management process, there'll be a, um, an incident management process. And elements of IT asset management need to be built into those processes or interfaces between those processes and our IT asset management processes. So as an asset manager, we need to, as the, the process owner, we need to manage and control compliance, policies, processes, procedures. We need to invoke um, communication and ongoing education about ITAM. Uh, but equally, we need to make sure the people at the the day-to-day -day operational level are doing what they should be doing. So there's an element of policing in terms of KPIs and reporting and things like that we need to put in place. And as an IT asset manager, if we understand the challenges, so there's a mind map of all the various challenges this poor person's got, uh, if we understand the challenges, then we put something in place to make sure those challenges don't actually happen. Okay, so we, we address the challenges. We make sure they... Um, we can generate benefits or an ROI from those uh, interfaces, from those activities. OK, so Rolf, any questions for the ITAM Foundation? I first of all, thank you very much, Steve. Um, I did put in the chat that there is a possibility to ask uh, any questions before we go to a break. So if there are any urgent questions that you uh, want to get answered or you feel that is available to others as well, uh, put them in the chat yeah. and we'll give it a, a minute to wait. And otherwise we'll take a five minute break and then uh, continue afterwards. Yeah. Maybe a really good add on is that what you said before, Steve, uh, is uh, finding war stories. I really like that phrase. Um, I suggested to Rob to put it in a presentation, but he, yeah, he said maybe it was not the best sentence, but um, <laughs> yeah, I, I I agree. I I must be more politically correct and, and not call them. Although I do like the, I, I, to me it's very clear what you mean with it. So if if somebody is looking for those war stories, on the item uh, channel, this is also part of item org. It's this uh, um, 
community portal environment where you can find a, really a lot of articles. They post like two, three per week. Uh, and here you can really find a lot of those war stories. And if you need to really, if somebody needs to make a business case for the training, there's there's several examples there that indeed um, broadcast uh, million dollar fines, really, and also million dollar settlements, which is quite uh, impressive. So if you're interested, that might be a good source. I think that the, the presentation in the beginning, there you can also find the link to it. It's the item channel. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, so I'll, yes. I'll share the link. Yeah, indeed. Um, OK, so if there are not any more questions, I uh, think it's a good time to have a break of five minutes and we will continue at my time. It's 1711. And we'll continue with five minutes, so that's 1716. Yeah, um, with coffee. So then we will yeah. be back. Yeah. We... OK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do have a question, yeah. but we'll, we will handle it after the after the break, so everyone can uh, yeah. take a break. Okay, thank you. Thank all. you. And if there's more questions, keep them coming. Yeah, yep, thank definitely. You. All right. Okay.
quite impressive, Rolf, that that's your home library. Yeah, it's one of my uh, goals in life to <laughs> collect Prime as many achievements. Books, yeah, collect as many <laughs> books as possible. So it's a good thing I work for a publisher, so it makes it a bit easier. You also memorize all of them by heart, right? No, definitely. You can pick one out and I can just <laughs> tell you what it is. <laughs> all right, we are um, at 17.16 for uh, on my side. Um, I hope everyone is back. We're gonna yeah, we still need just Steve, I think. Yeah, we definitely need Steve, so we're going to wait two more minutes. Yeah. Hi, Steve. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, I, I filled, I put too much water in the kettle, so ah. it took a little bit longer to, uh, <laughs> to boil. Well, no worries. Uh, so Steve, we first have a, a compliment from, uh, I hope I say it correct, uh, Andres. Andre, Andre, how do you say it? Andres. Andres. Uh, he says, very good presentation, thank you. Uh, oh. so, thank uh, you, Andres. And we do have a question from uh, Raul Arturo Diaz. Um, he says that he would like to hear more about the relationship between uh, item and configuration management and financial management. If you maybe can give a, uh, yeah, a quick view on that, Steve. I think we yeah. discussed that this afternoon. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, in terms of uh, item, um, Item and configuration. Um, <laughs> ITIL had them joined up together um, in um, a process called service, as service asset and configuration management, which was basically a, a combination of um, uh, combination of, of ITAM of asset management and configuration. Um, prior to that, ITIL just called it configuration management and asset management was sort of buried in there in terms of collecting data about the assets. So it's it, it's really only in, I don't know, the last year or two that with ITIL we see a clear definition, there's a recognition that asset management is different to configuration management. It, it was a bit of a, a, a mishmash, it was all sort of joined up together, wasn't very clear. Um, but item really it depends on the organization so you could be an it asset manager as a role and actually be doing configuration management um if, if i give you an example what one of our customers has two people working on hardware asset management two people working on software asset management two people working on software license management and they have two configuration managers and the, the two configuration managers are basically joining the assets together um, in, in terms of um, creating a hierarchy on the, the integrated service management tool they use, which links all of the assets back to the, um, the services, whether it's a customer facing service or a, a supporting service, um, and also linking um, users in um, linking uh, data assets in as well. Rolf? Rolf? Yeah? You need to mute there, sorry. <laughs> so, so th there is an interrelationship between the, the, the two process areas or the two practices. Um, if, if you do an ITIL course, um, I'm probably doing a sales pitch for Axelos here, so apologies for it. Uh, but if you do an ITIL foundation course... All fine by me, all fine by me. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because you, you can get courseware um, yeah. through uh, Moritz and um, through Van Harren um, and become a, an affiliate with PeopleSet for the exams. Um, right, now you're promoting me, so again, thank Right, you. okay, so yeah, go back to Axelos. <laughs> no if, if, yeah. if, if, um, if you take an ITIL exam, um, you get 12 months free access to what's called My ITIL. Um, and that 12 months free access gives you access to all of the practice guides. And there are 34 practice guides and they're, they're all published now. Um, and they will be keeping them up to date on a regular basis. So they, they, won't be, um, they won't be publishing them. They won't be in a book. Some elements will be in a book. Um, other elements aren't. <laughs> um, 
and and uh, to be honest they they don't go into as much detail down to activity level as i would like uh so if you've still got access to the ITIL version 3 process areas uh, or process documents keep hold of that because what axlos have done is built ITIL 4 on on top of ITIL version 3 so um so yeah, to go back to the original question, I've done a typical trainer thing and gone off on a tangent. Um, yeah, the asset management and configuration management work together. Um, in, in a small organization, you might do both. So you could be a configuration manager and an asset manager. They're just two roles. You combine them into one job. Um, back in 1995, um, I think it was when I, I first did my, my first ISIL course, I came back and found I was responsible for eight of the process areas, which I very quickly got rid of, um, delegated to various people. Um, but yeah, the it, it, every organization will be different. Configuration management is just joining up the assets together. Um, so if, if we were a utility company, it would be joining the the cables to the transformers to the meters okay so we're just configuring all of the assets so we, we have an understanding of how the assets fit together to deliver a service okay i, I hope that answered right. it in yeah, a very long-winded way <laughs> i hope i hope uh, you indeed answered. um so for the next part uh steve you can continue and for the rest if you could if you have any uh, questions that pop up just put them in the chat and we will uh uh, discuss them afterwards. Okay. Um, so the, um, yeah. yeah. Take it away. The, okay. Thanks, Rolf. Um, in in the next section, um, it, over a, well, about probably about twenty minutes or so, um, I'd, I'd just like to to briefly cover what's in the the SAM specialist course and what's in the HAM specialist course. As as you would expect, the the SAM <laughs> SAM specialist builds on the information that has been acquired at foundation level. Uh, ITIL Foundation, sorry, ITIL, oh, sorry. ITAM Foundation is not a, it's not a prerequisite to take the SAM course, but it is recommended. So if you come straight into a SAM course, for someone who's been working in IT asset management or software license management or SAM, for several years, you'd probably be OK. But for a newbie, a new person to ITAM who's done the foundation, who wants to do SAM, I'd say do the foundation first. OK, so what, what does SAM cover? Um, in terms of learning objectives, it's it's really looking at the end to end software asset management as a practice. Um, it, it, it's, it's not a practice in ITIL, but it is an ITAM practice. Let's let's put this that way. OK, uh, so it's understanding at depth the software asset management lifecycle. So we, we're going to cover that. Uh, it's understanding the concepts and definitions and we'll introduce more uh, than we did at the foundation level. And it's also in understanding what makes software asset management work. So the principles, the models, um, and the, the processes and procedures that we put in place. Also, more of an in-depth look at SAM in terms of the roles and responsibilities. So we'll we start to draw out things like software license management as a, a responsibility, um, rather than just sort of touching on it as we did at foundation level. Um, and also an in-depth look at the, the technology and architecture of SAM. Um, but we are we are agnostic in terms of technology, so we can talk about functionality of the technology, but we're not recommending uh, specific software or, or hardware around SAM. So looking at it from a, uh, an agnostic perspective, so not making recommendations. OK, and we do the same when we talk about software license management, we talk about the concepts. We talk about generic uh, management um, of software licenses, and that's because the software licenses and conditions vary from organization to organization, from uh, provider to provider, from country to country. 
Okay, so it's very difficult to give specific um, uh, recommendations on what you should be doing. So we do it generically. Okay, you you apply it um, as you will to your organisation, or as a trainer, advise your. Um, sorry about that. An alarm just went off. Um, ad advise your delegates in in terms of. Um, maybe advice sell them consultancy on, on on the back of the training um if they're looking for specific um advice and guidance on oracle license management or microsoft or ibm so we, we cover things in detail uh, so at foundation level we, we touched on proof of license um in in the SAM specialist course, we're, we're going into a lot more detail. So the, the trainer needs to have uh, more detailed knowledge um, in ter terms of the um, the war stories. Um, you know, they, they the, the trainer ideally should um, either have some information where where they've uh, been audited, um, where they've managed software licenses or as googled it there's lots of white papers out there there's lots of for some reason there's lots of organizations sharing information um on the internet uh, and you can you can pull that imp information off and use that as examples but there are examples actually within sam as well okay which you can use um so we're going to cover everything in sam from from policies right the way down to processes and procedures around the, the complete life cycle. Um, and explain why policies are important. It's not just a case of you must have a policy. Why? Well, OK, then. let's explain why you need to have a policy. So we do do go in detail. Around some of the concepts as well, why they're important. So, you know, so policies control people's behavior. That's what we're seeking to do with a policy, whether it's a Policy, or whether it's an acceptable use policy. Um, so we're going down to that sort of level of knowledge, more, more detail in every respect. We are also using ISO 19770. We talked about it in the foundation level being three tiers. Uh, we, we're going to use these three tiers uh, and a case study. Um, to draw out examples of how we can implement SAM in an organization to achieve tier one, tier two, tier three. And a big chunk of the course is about how we do this. So we're going to look at tier one, what should be in place to ensure we've got trustworthy data to achieve tier two, how we do lifecycle integration with various other um, functions or processes or departments or suppliers. Uh, and then tier three, what needs to be in place to ensure that we've optimised what we're doing in terms of uh, maybe providing uh, information to financial management. We're managing the, the cost of licences. Um, so we're not over procuring and we're not under procuring. Um, and also being able to to report on that in terms of how much money we've saved the organization or risk we've reduced. So things like risk management, service level management, uh, relationship management, contract management. So those are the processes or functional areas within the organization. So we spend a lot of time going through tier one, tier two, th tier three. Um, and just give you an example, Tier one, um, we described the tier one processes, what the definition is, roles, activities, how to actually implement it, and then look at the key performance indicators to to prove that we have actually implemented it and it's it's successful and it's working. Um, and also down at tier one, look at the specific roles and processes. So we will produce an explanation of how tier one can be achieved. So an organization could use this as a roadmap in terms of how to implement SAM in their organization. 
Um, ideally, the trainer will have some knowledge. They'll be able to add to the information that's on the slide. They'll be able to provide examples. And we also have this case study. So this case study that runs um, throughout the implementation part of the training course. Um, and the case studies, universal exports located in UK, 700 employees, we import and export. Um, we've got R&D um, and we use consultants. So that sort of scene setting and we build on this and we apply various exercises to it um, and hopefully come up with some, some, answer, some good answers uh, in terms of a practical implementation of the theory. Okay, so as a trainer, what we should really do is go through this case study and come up with um, not, not answers, but in, in terms of examples. Okay, um, and th this will help reinforce the, the learning objectives and help reinforce some of the theory at the specialist level. OK, so said any questions there, we'll probably skip to the end. OK, so HAM and HAM is the other special uh, specialist course that we have. So hardware asset management. Key learning objectives, again, looking at um, how hardware asset management uh, established it as a practice within the organization. Um, understanding the life cycle of, of various different hardware assets because not all assets hardware assets are, are the same um, understanding that the concepts and definitions going in more detail than we did do at the item foundation level um, and building on the principles and models looking at roles and responsibilities and again looking at technology and architecture of hand so similar to sam but looking at it from a a hardware perspective, um, but also understanding that, that there is a relationship between hardware and software asset management. So you may be able to spot something here, uh, which is a, a linkage between ITAM and ITIL. So in, in ITIL, we talk about four dimensions. And those four dimensions very roughly map, map onto the um, the four areas of ITAM in terms of hardware and software, um, in terms of people and information, and in terms of clouds and services. So it's it's really identifying that hardware is at the, the base of everything we do. So the, the software runs on the hardware, the the software accesses data and the people accesses the, access the data or the information that comes out of it. Um, so there's a, a very strong linkage now between the, the specialists. Um, now ITIL 4 has come out, linking it back to things like the seven guarding principles, the value stream um, and the, the, the value system uh, in ITIL 4. So any trainer who's got at least ITIL Foundation or good working knowledge of IT service management should be quite easily be able to deliver the, the HAM specialist course, if not the SAM specialist course. Again, in HAM, we do similar thing that we do in the SAM course. We look at the three tiers of ISO 19770 and we use that to implement the um, universal exports uh, case study exercises. OK, so, so that's HAM, but very simply, there's, just to give you an idea, there's 220 slides in, uh, 220 slides in ITAM Foundation. There are about 250 in SAM, and there's over 300 slides in HAM. So the, there's a lot of information provided by ITAM Org and Van Haren. But as a trainer, you really need to, to build on that with your own examples, your own experience. Um, and, and add, well, bring it to life, really. Bring the topic to life in terms of real world experience. Um, if, if you haven't got real world, 
real world experience, pinch somebody else's, um, but understand what it was they did and why they did it. Um, and there's lo lots of information out there on the internet. Okay, so uh, so so as a as a trainer, you're wanting to develop your capabilities, your skills, knowledge, and experience, and it, it's just a case of going out and doing it. Okay, so and anyone who can deliver ITIL training should be able to deliver at least the ITAM foundation, if not HAM and SAM as well. Okay, so. We talked about Ham and Sam. Um, in the future, we have PINAM and SIAM um, as specialist um, courses, uh, which I know ITEMORG are working on. Um, and there is the hope that we will have a, an ITAM expert level of training as well at some stage. Uh, but I suspect this will be quarter one, quarter two, quarter three uh, deliverables. Uh, we're also, um, as, as part of, or Purple Griffin is, um, d developing the, these courses um, alongside ITEMORG. So we are helping. So I'm, I'm not saying we're writing all of the, the information for ITEMORG, but we're, we're contributing. So anyone who feels that they could contribute in terms of PINAM or CAM, uh, to this body of knowledge and to the training courses, then I, th I think if you reach out to ITEMORG, they'd be more than happy to take your contributions or at least start to engage with you um, in terms of helping to, to, to develop this, this body of knowledge. Okay, so this probably is where I shout out to Rolf. Are there any final questions? Yes. Thank you very much, Steve. That was a, a, a bit quicker yeah. than, uh, than the, the first part. Um, <laughs> I knew it would be. <laughs> yeah, which is yeah. obviously which is fine. Let me um, stop sharing my yeah. screen. Yeah, are there any... Need has some questions. Yeah. yeah, also maybe about the first part from uh, Jesper about ETAM Org, the member organization, or uh, for Marit, uh, yeah. for the, uh, the partnership schemes. Um, Related yeah, to course, to, uh, courses, possibilities, etc. In the meantime, I will provide some additional info. So the um, uh, this train trainer was more also an overview uh, of the course. Uh, thank you, Steve, for being willing to to help with that. Um, the next session, which will be next Friday uh, early mor uh, yeah, morning in European time zone, we will record this session and share it with everyone. Same will be for the next session because indeed because of the time zones, probably not everybody will be able to attend. If you have questions, let us know in advance. Um, uh, yeah, thanks. So I need to share the questions, please. Um, also, a few updates. So that scores uh, will be given by uh, Jan from ITEMORG. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> hey, keep oh, yeah. yeah I'm, um, I'm replying. Um, but so uh, that course will go more in depth, not fully in depth, because there's only two hours, so it's two too little time to, to cover everything in detail. Um, so feel free to definitely uh, join. It will be more about Sam and Ham. And also I told in the beginning about the community environment. It's still uh, new, let's say we're still creating it, but our goal is to there really create an environment for trainers in this subject. Uh, so you can share all your content and stories and war stories. And indeed there's now, there's a few initiatives going on. There's a French chapter, a French language chapter starting, arising. There's a German chapter starting and becoming stronger. The Dutch chapter is really uh, starting to kick off. So uh, those are new, well, those are initiatives that are really gaining ground. So please uh, let us know if you want to contribute and participate. I know also in South Africa, it's uh, picking up. Um, so if you'd like to join, let us know, get in contact with us or with ITEMORG and we will connect you with anybody else. Um, and we'll also share all the content of this session slides, also an exam vouchers, exam vouchers for everyone, the courseware, and also later on in the beginning of January, uh, the e-learning from uh, Steve will be shared with you in case you prefer to offer the e-learning or share that. Um, did I forget anything? Oh yeah, and we'll provide you access how to enter the community environment. So that's my uh, final talk. Um, indeed, any more questions? Uh, from anyone, you can also turn on your mic if you like to. 
I could probably add, a, uh, if there's some questions, I can also add a bit of information, uh, Maurice. Um, so, yeah, sure. so in the helping organisations, uh, you know, getting to understand uh, where they are, where they go, we actually, as a, as um, as members of Mitemorg, we also provide uh, or offer a maturity assessment, which is uh, which is an online thing that can. Uh, help uh, in, in many aspects in, in gaining ground and on your understanding your baseline understanding also the pitfalls where you are um, so so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of um, tools and and uh, support to get in, in in various areas and this is this is certainly one um, I could recommend as well uh, hi hi uh, Hespa. hi this is hi this is Costu here so you just Hello? now mentioned hi. Uh, you just now mentioned about an IT asset management uh, uh, assessment. Uh, is that yes. uh, is that uh, like generally in ITIL we have a questionnaire or we create a questionnaire uh, approach to start with? Is that something like a questionnaire which we can build upon, or we have some presets with which 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 we can work with with the customers as the starting point, and then maybe create interest in them so that they can take this forward. Uh, do you have something like that to share with us? I, I'm, Absolutely. I'm just, yeah. OK. All right. It's a, it's um, there's actually also a, a free version of 20 uh, questions, so you can can get, get a feel. It's a uh, go to the itemwork.com uh, page or we can uh, we can share the link actually directly here. Um, so so you can can check it out um, the the full um, Questionnaire. It's a, it's a hundred uh, questions uh, in in the basic uh, that covers all the basic areas, and then there are some optional questions if you if you have IBM or if you have Oracle or SAP and stuff like that. So uh, and also for digital okay. trans okay. digital transformation. Right. Yeah. There's a baby on the line somewhere. Yeah, uh, yeah. She, I I I have my baby. <laughs> She's good. good, good. She's let, rattling let around. Let's take the assessment. Yeah, yeah. Get her involved. <laughs> uh, so, um, so, so yes, you can take the the free and and then have a look, and then uh, and then for for end user organizations, it it is obviously meant for that. But but in in any case, if you wanna, as a service organization, also um, take advantage of it, then then we should probably have a discussion on how that would how that would work. Thank so you. We'll share the link for for you on that one. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Esther. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> let hi, her, all. Let this her do this. Is, hi, all. Uh, hi, all. This is Bal Krishna here. Uh, I'm an ITL expert and SIAM professional, uh, certified professional. Uh, so basically, uh, the IT asset management, which we uh, talked about, uh, the ba base core wherein we talked about infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, right? And uh, software as a service. The three core things that we talked about, right? And uh, wherein we are with the AWS and we are into the virtual era. Uh, this is the first thing which I came to know of uh, asset management, wherein we are in line with uh, the upgrades which are happening into the IT industry. No one is using the physical servers today, uh, it's minimal, uh, but uh, the virtual environment which is getting used. Uh, Thanks for creating this course because uh, the asset management which comes in service transition of ITL, uh, basically it's, a, a, I mean to say a backbone. Uh, you all have developed this on terms of this one and you are trying to come up with the coming era of virtual uh, technology. Now the question here is when we try to upgrade, when we try to do software as a service or a platform as a service or infrastructure as a service, when we, when we do a upgrade, in terms of uh, capacity sizing of an asset, okay, would that be covered into this asset management? Yeah, I think. Uh, Steve, did you get the question? Steve, you're on mute. The sizing part and the forecast. Now, uh, if there was a cloud or if there was a database which was being included for one application, the number of users have been increasing day by day. So any uh, customer 
would like to increase the sizing of that asset. Now we called software as an asset. When we call software as an asset, we would say uh, a server upgrade, simple uh, example. So if a server upgrade is getting upgraded, might be it's a Android upgrade or it's a Windows upgrade or a Linux upgrade because the base version which is utilizing the application would be the same, but there would be uh, application patches or the upgradation which is happening. That's one part. Second is in terms of the hardware components that is utilizing for that application. Might be the hard drive, might, might be the database, might be uh, any other hardware like the CPU. So in, in the further trend, like if we see the trend of the usage of the users, uh, when you have a particular asset, say if I have a asset name uh, application A, which is connected to hardware and which is connected to software. So if I bifurcate that application into hardware and software, I have two things in my case. And eventually when I keep a record of that uh, asset, I would be keeping a trend of that record where it started and where it is, it is on the basis of software as well as hardware. So just uh, wanted to highlight that point. That's it. Thank you. Um, Steve, you're still on mute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Apolo apologies. Um, yeah, the um, I, I was playing around with the button. <laughs> so apologies. Um, yeah, the, the the data and information um, is it, it is of use there. You know, in in the cloud. Um, in, in a previous role, my job was um, a capacity manager. So I, I was modeling uh, capacity on mainframe and the network. In, in the cloud, that is really difficult. And IT asset management, if we can collect the data uh, and trend that data, that gives us valuable information in terms of capacity and performance. Um, of, of those services so we, we don't end up with performance issues or um, um, applications and, and services crashing so yeah it's um, but mo moving beyond physical servers in our own data center is um, it's a challenge but it's something that we need to manage as IT professionals thank you yeah. Okay. Thank you. Spot on answer, Steve. Thanks. <laughs> um, I uh, thank you also for the question. Um, also, a question regarding translation. So probably short-term exams will be translated to French and English, and there's also uh, also other content will be made available. And so the chapters are really uh, this is a chapter effort, and also um, well, you need to speak with uh, Jesper, but also. If you feel that there might be an opportunity to create a chapter in a different country uh, with Kaustuf, who spoke earlier, asked the question earlier, um, we discussed it also, for, for example, in Southeast Asia, or maybe a country like yeah. India, USA, it, it could be an option, right? The Kaustuf might be an uh, yep. interesting yep, opportunity. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, Moritz, thanks for that. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, hopefully, with this COVID vaccine coming out, soon uh, maybe the situation improving a bit uh, <laughs> we are looking forward to having a chapter which may be fully contributing in southeast asia somebody has a yeah. mic uh, disturbance so yeah. yeah we 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 are looking at that i have talked to my partners also uh, i don't know where is the disturbance sorry for that um, so i have talked to my partners and yes we are looking at creating an item chapter uh, for sharing oh, knowledge yeah. and and yeah and uh, uh, but yeah people are still in lockdown condition or movement restriction condition out here and that's why it's not really happening that diligently but we are looking forward uh, to this kicking off early next year because Malaysia is getting vaccines I guess by end of the year so yeah that's what yeah. we are looking at perfect thanks Maurice uh, yeah we'll we'll keep you updated also. Yeah, thanks. And also hereby you got the connection with Jesper, so that's a that's a great uh, foreseeable future. Um, thanks, Jesper. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Um, indeed, Oliver. So as I mentioned, we try to connect with uh, you. Mentioned the question, Oliver, regarding the translation. Also, Emanuela is in the call, who's also based in um, um, Montreal. In uh, exactly. Well, apparently you know each other. <laughs> yeah. We do. Um, yeah, perfect. Who's also uh, conveyed interest 
and uh, offer to support with uh, with possible uh, her colleague offer to support with possible translation. Um, so there, well, we that's why I also mentioned that the French chapter might not be a French French chapter, but a French language chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So there has already been some talks on this uh, subject. So there, our goal is to unite and combine. Uh, and if you want to collaborate and support, that would be uh, that would be great. So really yep. try to uh, facilitate in this. Yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely. Yeah, we, we do have experience with other um, practices for uh, doing the finding the the proper translation to make it international French, which which might yeah. be sometimes a, a challenge between Quebec and France. But we used to yeah. that, so so definitely yeah. we can help. Um, we'd be delighted. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thank you also for reaching out in this. So that's uh, the fine left of the call. I, I, I'm not in a position to <laughs> to figure these differences, but uh, yeah, but, that, that's uh, fine. I'll, I'll reach out to, to Stefan. I, I have uh, connections to him. So. Oh, good. Thank yeah, perfect. Exactly. It, it's funny because in, uh, for example, uh, because we experienced it, I experienced it in almost all languages so far. Uh, also in Spanish, Chinese, even we now in Chinese, it's called simplified Chinese. Yeah, uh, yeah, not to downgrade the language, but to make a common uh, absolutely, understanding. Absolutely. And to yeah. my 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 take on that is uh, well, if we can um, to have one one set of French um, instead of two, because we we've been doing that for all exactly. practices, and it's a nightmare. So so it's better to have one <laughs> and make sure exactly. that everybody is uh, on the same page. Yeah, exactly. Fully agree. And. Yeah, not to. Uh, so there is a function in the exam portal which enables you to to Google Translate the questions. Yeah, it's okay. unbelievable, but true. So maybe even worst case scenario, it can be uh, Google Translated, but that's a uh, very far, far, far ahead. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. thank you, Emanuela. Emanuela confirms that it's uh, that there is a difference. I'm aware of it. Not myself, but I know it exists. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Are there any other questions or comments? Uh, so far, also thank you, Olivier. You're welcome. Question in Dutch. That's going to be for you, Maritz, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So also, uh, <laughs> let's say that. But also, and that's Arjen. Uh, uh, Arjen Lindemann, did I say it correctly, Jesper? Uh, he's making progress on the Dutch chapter uh, and also check uh, seeing what's the business case to do a translation to uh, Dutch. Also, it depends a bit because it's a, it's a language where English is also uh, very accepted. Uh, but if enough people like not what we already see here, if enough um, um, professionals like to support and see the potential business case also to do the translation, then it's possible because we really work on the community. So it's a really community built uh, product here. Um, yeah, so uh, thank you also for the input. And um, yeah, we'll see what the future holds. Um, okay. Any more questions? Last statement from anyone? Then I think it's good to close the call in time. So everybody can continue the evening. One last, if, one last um, okay. question. One last question. Yeah. And now, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, assets, IT assets, and now when we talk about uh, uh, ticketing tools, or when we talk about uh, service management tools, wherein we have a service now, or when we have Sharewell. So uh, do we have an integration path? Uh, that's one. And second is about the asset uh, uh, age. Uh, when the asset will retire or is it uh, in working condition about the age of the asset? And then relating the asset uh, from the incident management to problem management and then going into the change management. So can we incorporate that workflow into ITM? Um. Yeah, yes, you you can incorporate uh, that, that workflow. Um, in, in terms of the training, we we don't cover that as as part of IT asset management. Um, but in in terms of providing advice and guidance uh, beyond that, then it's it's an interface between um, uh, between I, uh, the ITAM practice and the incident management practice, or the change management practice. So wh wh when you'd be documenting the the process areas, you, you would describe those interfaces as well. So um, whether it's the disposal of an asset, um, it, it has to be in some process to make sure it's correctly disposed of. Um, or if we're reusing an asset 
or if we if if, if an asset's broken and needs to be disposed of, then the, the process areas should interface. Um, and in, in tools like ServiceNow, we we could create um, a task within the workflow, uh, which could generate a task to uh, IT asset manager or to uh, a technician or someone in a, a particular team um, to dispose of the asset and update the CMDB. Thank you. Thanks for okay. the answer. It's okay. Thank you also for the question. Uh, Thank you. Then, yeah. Thanks everybody. Thanks. Uh, I think that we uh, we call it uh, we call the uh, call it a day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, Rolf, for the moderating, Steve, for the You're presentation, welcome. Jesper, also for your input. And also, thank you, everybody, for participating. Next week, we have the next session. We'll follow up with a lot of information. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions, comments, or just like to talk. Uh, we're up for all, for all of it. <laughs> and then uh, I bid you goodbye. And thank you very much. Right. Yeah. Thank, thank, you thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, thank you for organizing it. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Thank you, Jesper. Yeah. Thank okay. you, Myers. Thanks, okay. everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.